I recently finished up a tournament on Lake Mille Lacs in which I thought that we did pretty well on, but there was this young kid from Wisconsin that showed up and really kind of put on a clinic, and he was doing something completely different than everybody else, myself included, and that was fishing the weeds with slip bobbers. So I gave my buddy Max Wilson a call up, and I said, hey, you want to shoot a show on Lake Mille Lacs and fish some slip bobbers in the weeds? And he was grateful enough to say, yes, I'd love to. So today on the show, there's going to be some serious secrets revealed with forward-facing sonar, and Max and myself are going to show you how to go into these weed beds and pluck big walleyes out of them. So stay tuned, we're about to show you the next bite. Fishing with bobbers on Lake Mille Lacs is a tried and true technique that people use on all different types of structure, especially on the expansive weed flats that you can find all over the lake. But something that has just recently been applied to the classic technique is the use of forward-facing sonar. Using forward-facing sonar, you can target individual fish tucked into the weeds on the expansive weed flats. It's no secret that walleyes love weeds, and the prime time to be in the weeds is end of spring, early summer, that May to end of June uh, time frame. And the reason why they love it is because there's a plethora of food in there, uh, especially young of the year perch, small minnows, they'll go in there because they feel safe and the walleyes will follow suit in there. The only time they ever really leave the weeds is when the water starts to warm up or the bait leaves. They'll push to deeper water if the water gets a little too warm for them or if the bait leaves, they'll follow the bait. But weeds are a great place to find some really big walleyes early summer. A uh, good eye on the uh, active target, Max. I got you, John. That's a pretty nice one. Yeah, that's a good one, John. Get Risky. the net for that one. I promise I won't hit it with the net. You better. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice one. There we go, Johnny. That's a good one. Uh, pretty sweet when you said 25 feet straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that's and a good one. And then it was bobber down. Man, those things, like, obviously can't resist a leech, but to be able to find them like hiding in those little cabbage houses. To watch them eat, it's yeah, fantastic. For sure. I could do that for probably five days straight. Yeah, I did, it's fun. <laughs> I was gonna say, you have done it for five days straight. All right, we'll get this one back. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricants. Putting equipment first. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley. Catch more fish. And Power Pole Total Boat Control. Closed captioning for the next bite is provided by Precision Trolling Data, the authority for crankbait diving depth information. Traditionally, while fishing for walleyes using bobbers, you're going to use lighter line and lighter rods. But when fishing in the weeds, it's important to really beef up your equipment. I've been bobber fishing my whole life on the lax, and one thing that I've changed since I started fishing the weeds with my buddy Max is made my equipment a little heavier. So generally I'd use a medium fast action rod, and when you're fishing out, say on the mud or the gravel, you like to reel down on fish, get your line tight, and have a nice flex to your rod to, to battle that fish. But when you come into the jungle in these bays on Lake Mille Lacs and you have heavy cabbage like we do here in the summertime, it takes a little bit more of a serious setup to get these fish up and out of the cabbage, especially the bigger ones. So um, I'm using a seven foot two medium extra fast. This one's a Fenwick world class, which is uh, just kind of my favorite lineup of rods. A really 
From there, I have a 10 pound main line. This happens to be Ultra 8 carrier. And then I go down to an eight pound leader. So usually it's a stealth thing out on the mud flats where I'll even use as little as a four pound leader. But in the jungle here, I go to an eight pound leader. So I just have a little bit more confidence that I can horse one of these fish when I need to, to get it up out of the weeds. From there, it's pretty simple. I'm using a perch colored jig. This one happens to be a 16th ounce just for a little bit of stealth. And on top of that is a eighth ounce egg sinker. So real simple setup, about as basic as it gets. But of course, we're doing it a little bit cooler, sniping these fish individually. So when you go to the weeds, beef up your setup a little bit and you'll be happy with landing almost every fish that you hook. It's gonna bite maybe? Maybe. Oh, dude, your bobber's oh, down. There we go. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice. a good one. <laughs> Little big head shakes. Yeah, yep. that thing was a horse on the screen. Yep. That's a good one. That's a really good one. Oh, hello. Oh, there we go. There we nice, go. <laughs> dude. That one's uh, full grown. Wow. Look at that one. Nice Just work, man. Smoked it. Look at that thing. With big old eyeballs. Just bit it right where it was supposed to, too. Right uh, in the... You snuck your bobber out there. Mine was like halfway down and yours was already going down. That yeah. Was sweet. That was an active one for sure. Nice fish, brother. Thank you. All right, let's get it back. I want to catch one. Total Control, presented by PowerPole. 20 years of trust evolved from Total Boat Control. So I want to give you a walkthrough of my Ranger 621 FS Pro. As we start up in the bow of the boat, I've got my Minkota Alltrax mounted on the bow. I've got a, uh, the, one of the biggest features up here is the recessed foot pedal. Uh, it gives you a lot less leg fatigue throughout the day. You can stand up there, run your trolling motor, and not get tired legs. As we walk back, we, we've got two big compartments in the, in, the, in the bow, one on the port, one on the starboard. Uh, both waterproof boxes, uh, don't need to worry about rain getting in there. As we work our way back to the rod locker, the center rod locker, uh, as you can see, there's plenty of room for, uh, I can carry up to 20 rods in, in my rod locker. As we walk back towards the consoles, we have uh, what I think is one of the neatest things is we actually have two glove boxes. As you look underneath the dash, we have a five gallon bucket here. I uh, use that for all my tools and anything I might need throughout the year. As you looked here next to the rod locker, I have a, you know, the center step up. That I use for, you know, anything, sunscreen, that kind of stuff. Just any little odds and ends you might need at a spur of the moment. And as you get here to the dash, you can see uh, I've got a flush mounted 12 inch screen and I've got another 10 inch mounted right on top of the dash. And we have the ride system here uh, next to it. That controls all of our gauges, all of our pumps, lights, etc. Everything runs off the ride system. As we walk back in the boat, uh, we have our two main compartments for storage. Uh, for me on the, on the port side or the passenger side, I like to keep all my, all my lighter stuff, my crankbaits and uh, anything like that that I'm gonna use for the day. Uh, as you see on the driver's side, I keep all my heavier stuff, all my jigs, my weights, uh, bottom bouncers, anything that's heavier, just to offset the bolt weight. Of course, as we get to the live well, giant live well can easily carry one of the biggest fish in the lake, uh, so that's not a problem for uh, muskies, walleyes, anything you might want to throw in there. As you look in the back, it's mounted with the uh, 400 Mercury Verado and a 15 Pro Kicker on it. And then of course in the floor we have all of our batteries, uh, carry four batteries in the charger down here and uh, this boat is completely rigged out. That's kind of a tour, a quick tour of what I use. Talk about a Ranger 621, if you, if you ever buy one I guarantee you won't be disappointed. With the adaption of forward-facing sonar, there are a ton of questions, many of them unanswered. But as techniques develop, so will the products. Max has found his favorite way to mount his transducer for the way that he fishes, and the settings on the sonar are constantly changing for specific applications. Forward-facing sonar is so fun to fish with, and my friends even say that I'm addicted to it. 
One of the ways that I like to do it is I like to target individual fish. It allows me to go through, pick and choose which fish that I want to target. And today in the weeds, it's exactly what we're doing. We're going through, finding these high fish that are higher in the water column that are actively feeding. So we're able to target the more active ones and get more bites. And part of the way that I set mine up, especially in the weeds, is I like to have mine on the trolling motor. Putting on a trolling motor allows me to make smaller adjustments through the weeds and find these fish that are hiding on the backside of the stalks to make more efficient casts. When I choose my trolling motor, I prefer a cable steering one over a traditional style because it's a lot more efficient, it's a little quieter, allows me to control the boat a little bit more. So basically I'm meandering around, panning back and forth through the weeds, finding these fish hiding behind the stalks. When I see a fish, I try and keep the boat about 30 feet away from the fish. There's a little bit of a sweet spot where if you get too close, you're gonna spook the fish. If you get too far away, you're not gonna see the fish properly. So about 30 feet is about the sweet spot that I like to keep them in. Make a short, precise cast and see how the fish reacts to my bait. If it reacts positively and it's going to eat, then I sit there and work the fish. If not, I move on to the next one, just targeting active fish. So if you wanna get into the forward-facing sonar craze, which I highly recommend, Put it on your trolling motor and with a little practice, you're gonna catch a lot more fish. Oh, I see it, 30 feet, yeah, yeah. There you go. Right on the back side of that weed stalk right yeah. there. Oh. She's hiding there. You're right on it. Oh, it's gonna bite. Oh, it just passed me and went to you. Are you kidding? Oh, bob her down. Of course. Nice. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's frisky. Sick. Oh, stay out of there. Well, oh, that's a big one. Come yeah. on, girl. We got heavy color here. Good eyes on the active target. That was a nice one. I called my shot, didn't I? Yeah. Nice. Good boy. That's a good one, wow. John. Right <laughs> Thank on. Yeah, buddy. That's a nice one. Oh, that's a good one. Wow, it wasn't going anywhere. I'm happy because uh, the thing was trying to get back in the cabbage. That's a nice one. Oh, that's a gorgeous fish. Good eye on that one. It was in the, on the backside of the thick stuff and you spotted it. Teamwork. I, I stuck my cast out there a little sooner than you. Oh, man. I mean, he did kind of look at me first and then went straight to you like normal, so we're on par. <laughs> right, right. All right, let's get it back. Nice sized walleye. Yep, have fun back in the weeds there. So Lawrence has come out with some amazing technology with their forward-facing sonar, the Active Target. Uh, when I first started using this, I was amazed by the actual distance that I could see fish at. So I'm actually able to see fish out even 100 feet away. So generally I'd have my scale at 100 feet, and by the time I got to about 80, I could really start getting a good idea of the size of the fish. Now, in a recent tournament, I watched Max Wilson put on a clinic casting bobbers in the weeds like we're doing today, and I was literally scratching my head like, how is he seeing those fish? Because at 80 feet, if you take a big weed bed and sandwich it down on the screen, what you end up seeing is a bunch of cabbage stalks right next to each other. So the number one thing he taught me was to actually zoom in on the screen and those same cabbage stalks get some separation to them. So the number one trick that we're using today is to put the range at 40 feet, allowing those cabbage stalks to separate, and now you can start seeing the individual fish hiding behind them. So, um, little different setup, your active target. If you're just out in open space, use that full extent, the full power of it, and look out. But when you get into these weeds, it's important to lower that scale down to 40 feet, separate those stalks of cabbage, and you're gonna start seeing the picture that Max Wilson saw when he taught me a walleye lesson at the last tournament. That one's gonna eat. Oh, he shot at it. Oh yeah. I'll play, I'll provide a little backup. All right, you block him in, I'll oh, catch him. Oh, that one's gonna bite. Oh, he's looking at it. Oh, Max. Oh, there we go. Nice. That's a good one. Oh yeah. Hang on. Let me get there we go, in. John. That's a good one. <laughs> nice. Heck yeah, buddy. That's a good fish. That was a fun one. It was out on the edge of the weeds oh and it was gosh. like stuck out like a sore thumb. I've been chasing this one for a minute. That's funny. He rejected my bait like three times. Look at how look at how that that one just swallowed that leech. That fish wasn't going nowhere. That was proper. It was out off the edge of the weeds and you're just chasing it down. It finally stopped. You made like the perfect cast as I watched the thing just go straight down to it. It's like you're gonna get bit. 
it sat there and looked at it for a good three, four minutes before it ate. Wow, this this hook is in there. Let me grab you a pliers. Yeah, I'll need a pliers for this one. It's almost like this fish read the uh, read the handbook for walleyes. Weed edge at prime time with a leech. Yeah. Like, leech, food, thank you. Yeah, he he read the book. There you go. That's thank funny. you. That's beautiful. Very nice. Well played. Let's get him back in there and get like 17 more. Yeah, I think it's my turn. Uh, I think it's still my turn, John. Oh. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Schaefer's Specialized Lubricants. Putting equipment first. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. And Power Pole, total boat control. Topics, leading information and tackling techniques to make you a better angler. Presented by Mercury. You know, I'm actually probably the perfect person at the next bite to talk a little bit about cleaning your boat and keeping your engine cowlings clean because I might be the worst out of every one of the whole crew. I'll be dead honest about that. And when I do go about cleaning my boat and motor, I wanna make it as easy as possible and use a product that's great. And one of the things for the last year that I've been using a lot of is this new Mercury all-in-one spotless shine. And the cool thing about this product is it is an all-in-one, just like it says. It protects, it details, and it cleans. But the thing I really like about it is it's a one-time deal, meaning I don't have to spray this on and go over it with water afterward. You just spray this on real quickly and wipe it down. So you'll actually be able to see, it. here's my Mercury 300 Pro XS. Um, and it's as simple as like I just said, this is a, this is a spray that you're just gonna spray on. Obviously you wanna use a microfiber towel, something real soft for, for you know, your engines and for your boat. But you're gonna spray it on and you'll see that right away, it just totally takes away some of those water spots. So a product that works extremely well. And like I said at the beginning, I'm not someone that wipes my boat down after every use. In fact, it might be two, three weeks at a time before I wipe my boat down. So anything within the boat, this product's safe to use for, and it's a one-time deal, very simple, and it cleans extremely well. So check it out. If you're looking for a good cleaner, this Mercury All-in-One Spotless Shine is really a good product. Developing new techniques and learning how to use new equipment is exciting. In general, these developments lead to catching more fish. Actually really cool and effective to make changes quicker because otherwise you're just sitting out there wondering. Yep. You might change color once in a while, but here it's like instant. You, you know, could, we got denied three times, let's change something, and then boom, instant, you know. You could see its mood change and when it was coming into a feeding pattern and when it was in a feeding mood, when it was negative. I mean, it went through all this phases in about five minutes with this fish. And then couldn't resist. Yep. Using forward-facing sonar on the weed flats of Lake Mille Lacs is a perfect example of using a new product to help eliminate water on very large areas and being able to put your bait in front of more fish, especially with a technique that is generally a very slow-moving technique, taking a lot of time to cover water. Oh yeah, 30 feet? Oh yeah, take him. Yep, there you go. There's two of them, dude, get out there. I'll take the close one, you take the far one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're posturing. Oh, it's coming right at you. <laughs> Come on. Heavy posturing. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to see that. <laughs> oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Stay out of the cabin, girl. Here we go. <laughs> you drag screamer. Nice. There we go, John. Oh. That's a really good wow. one. Wow. That's, that's that, a stud. That's a... Uh, Real large head on that thing. Good eye. That one was, uh, well, there was two. And uh, the one was hiding in the cabbage and the other one was on the edge. John I, was looking at La La Land and see his bobber go down. Well, it was nice that he told me, but. I got gotcha. you. That was a hog. <laughs> that, is a, that is a Mille Lacs monster. 
It was so funny watching them both like get excited and posturing. And then, uh, you know, then you're staring at the active target and then you look up and you're like, oh, my bomber is down. I just watched that on TV. How nice. That's awesome. That's <laughs> I don't know how many times I've been looking at the active target and you don't see, you're not paying attention to your bobber and all of a sudden you look up like, oh, I should be getting bit. And your bobber's like 10 feet below the water. Oh, I did get bit. <laughs> all right, let's get that one back. Heck yeah. Good clean release. I'll get the net. Here, I got this, buddy. I know how much you love these. Oh, it's off. Oh, I'd say, uh, probably not. Go ahead. No, I got it. Off. Yeah, did it? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Let's show the folks at home. Folks at home, folks <laughs> at home. Oh, yeah, extend that puppy out. Okay. Right. Here. Here. Thanks. Oh, John. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's a minus six, John. Uh, it's a minus one, okay? No, it's. John. Yeah, Pike. <laughs> Hope your cell phone smells good. <laughs> Motor because it's a little more efficient, it's a little slower, uh, a little quieter, and it moves through the. The next bite would like to thank McCoy's Inn, located in Isle, Minnesota. Whether you're entertaining clients, arranging a company get together, or a trip with family or friends, we can help make your experience memorable with our first class resort, friendly staff, and the finest equipment. To book a room, please call 1-800-862-3535. That's 1-800-862-3535.